Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Esports, Mavericks, and, and Beyond. beyond. How are you today, Chase? I'm doing great, and I'm excited today because we have Steve Isaacs from Epic Games. <laughs> welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. I'm really excited to be here. I've watched a few of your episodes and uh, love what you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you. We've seen some of your stuff that you've been doing, and it looks phenomenal. Thanks for Thanks. coming to the show. My pleasure. Since this is a show for gamers, we'd like to play a little game before we dive in. Are you up for a bit of fun? I think so. It's game, game time. time! We heard you're a gamer. So what's your favorite video game of all time? My, my favorite game of all time is StarCraft. I don't know if you all have played it, but um, it, uh, we used to own a, a, a gaming center, a land center. And we had so many great matches of StarCraft with the kids that hung out at our place. And uh, I've just continued to play, and I still play pretty much every Monday night with a bunch of friends. And it's uh, definitely my favorite. How about you guys? What's your favorite game? Uh, I have a couple of video games that I like. I really like the Marvel Spider-Man video game. Awesome. I have a couple of games I like, too. But one of my favorites is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who doesn't love Mario Kart? Awesome. Mm-hmm. What was the last game you beat, Steve? That I beat? That's a good question. Because um, I often find, I, I, I'm like a game collector, so I often play games but don't necessarily beat them. I did play through all of um, What Remains of Edith Finch. I don't know if you've ever heard that game. That's like a, a very interesting adventure narrative style game. That might be the last one that I completed um i've yeah i'm gonna go with that for now i i there are a lot of big games that i've definitely far from complete all right and here's a bonus question all right what's your favorite music genre and band that's a great question i like jam bands so i like like um i don't know if you know the grateful dead or that kind of music but that's my favorite and i love 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 live music so i go to see a lot of concerts and festivals and stuff so that's definitely uh, something I'm very passionate about. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for playing, Steve. Mm -hmm. So for people who don't know who you are, can you share a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, um, thanks. So I'm the education program manager at Epic, um, which is really kind of exciting in the fact that we actually have an education team that really focuses on providing opportunities for kids to learn our tools and um, you know be, become familiar with these industry standard tools like Unreal Engine. Um, so my focus in my job right now is working with teachers and providing resources to make it easy for them to use the tools in the classroom, easy for kids to get started. Um, you know, we kind of try to make that learning curve. We try to, what we say, soften the learning curve. So a lot of my work is around working with teachers, training teachers, providing and having resources developed for teachers, that sort of thing. Uh, but interestingly, you know, I've only been in the job for about um, a little over a year. Um, I've actually been working with Epic for about two or so years because I did some work when I was still not here full time. But prior to that, I was a teacher for 28 years. And um, I started my career in special education and then ended up teaching game design and development um, to middle and high schoolers um, and stuff. And, and like I had mentioned before, too, we used to own a computer gaming and training center. So um, all through my life, like this passion of games has kind of found its way into whatever career I was at, at you know, whatever I was doing at the time. That's cool. I know a lot of kids would love to play video games and teach coding and all sorts of stuff like that. And you're doing it. It's like a dream job. <laughs> it, it is a dream job. Thanks. What age did you realize you wanted to be an educator? That's a really good question too. So interestingly, um, I so it's a, so when I was in college, I thought I wanted to be a psychologist. So I was in school for psychology. Then I started working with adults with disabilities in a group home, um, and that was really I really loved that. And you know, so while I was in college, somebody just suggested, why don't you you know go into the education program also? so you can get certified. And at least if you wanted to, you could teach. So I did not know that I wanted to teach. And then before I knew it, you know, I was teaching. And like I said, I ended up teaching for 28 years. So 
luckily I found my way there, but it definitely was not something I thought I would do, you know, growing up. What do you guys wow. want to do when you grow up? Um, well, the main thing I'd like to do is business. Awesome. I like business and at least the door open for me to do many other things as well. For sure. I'd like to become a lawyer or a, or a judge when I grow up. Awesome. Great. Maybe you could be a, a, a lawyer or a judge. You know, it's funny because one of the things I always find interesting is that, like, I have a passion for games. It sounds like you do also. And, you know, there's no reason why you couldn't be in business, but still with a, a game element or or a lawyer that still is surrounded by, you know, in the game industry and stuff. So if that's of interest, that would be an interesting way to go. Uh -huh. There are many ways to make money from gaming, even yes. in business, even as a judge or a lawyer. Absolutely. All right. So. We heard you're talking about something called game-based learning. So can you share what that is and yeah, why it's important? So, absolutely. So I've been involved in game-based learning for a long time. And sort of the whole idea of game-based learning has, has it's been around forever, really. When I was in school and probably your age, some of my favorite activities in school were things like in, a, in an economics class, we did a stock market game and it wasn't on computers. It was just, we were, we were given an amount of money to invest and we did it all in paper and pencil before spreadsheets and stuff. And it was really fun to kind of build this portfolio and, and watch it. Another activity I had in school was like doing a world peace type game that was also done on like paper and, and, you know, different, each team would be negotiating things and whatnot. So, you know, that's been around for a long time. Um, you know, then you had games like Oregon Trail. Have you guys ever played the Oregon Trail? No, uh, I haven't played it, but I've heard of it. All right, so it teaches, the, or his, it, the game teaches history. Am I yeah, correct? yeah. So it teaches about westward expansion, right? So it, it's a really neat game to learn in an experiential way about that. Just like the game Civilization has been used a lot in classrooms to teach about history and civilizations and all sorts of other games like that. But then... To me, something interesting happened. Um, so that was all very authentic game-based learning, like you're learning from playing the game. Then games like Minecraft and, and other games came out that allow you to create content in a game world, right? So in my mind, when all that started happening, things changed dramatically. Now game-based learning all of a sudden became more about using a game world or game technology as a tool to create anything for education. So then we moved from like, you know, learning about social studies from playing the game to creating maybe a tour, you know, or an experience of, let's say, ancient Egypt inside of a game. And you as the students were now still doing research, building this amazing experience that was immersive and that allowed other people to experience it. And in my opinion, it changed a lot of things like where maybe you were used to using PowerPoint to create a presentation. Now, imagine instead of using PowerPoint, you create this immersive experience that's much more engaging for you to create, but also for people, your peers to learn from in a game. So that changed game-based learning a lot. So I've loved watching that because I my passion is about students as creators. So I'm always looking to how how do we help kids become creators of content and, and using these tools for creativity? So that I think really made game-based learning much more um, you know, acceptable and, and used more widely in education. So I think we've come a real long way and it's been exciting to be part of it for many, many years. That is really cool. And I have a question. Have you played Minecraft yourself? Yes, I, it's funny, Minecraft. So when I was in the classroom, and I was teaching game design, my students were very passionate about Minecraft. So I wanted to bring it in so they would use it. Back then, and this is like 10 years ago, I wasn't even that, I didn't really love the game. I knew it was important to kids. So I did bring it in and allowed them to use it. And I learned so much from my students because they were the true experts. But what was super cool, I mean, you know, that was cool in itself. But then as I started using it more, yes, I've become very um, much a fan of the game. I think it's it's amazing what you could do in you know in Minecraft when it comes to building and then automating things and using redstone and command blocks and all. Um, I've seen 
kids do amazing things and I've grown to, to, to love the game, even, you know, playing it casually myself. Do you guys play? Oh yeah, I play. I play. As of recording this, I think there's an update coming out tomorrow. So oh, I'm going wow. to have to check that out. That shows how far behind I am because I was not aware of that. I used to be much more aware of what was happening with Minecraft, but that's all right. All right. So what age do you think is appropriate for kids to start learning about game development in programming? I'd say young. I mean, like, that's a really, really good question. Um, I think when we look at, like, there are certain areas, we always talk about, like, something I call a low floor and high ceiling, where certain games and game environments and game engines allow you to get started at a younger age and, and build get into level building and world building and some you know um, automation and things and then as you get a little older you can grow more and more into what you can do which you know becomes much more advanced so i think in elementary school there are great opportunities to get started um you know and even like our tool unreal engine which is one of the industry standard tools we put out some game design lessons like these um hour of code lessons that teach real basics in unreal engine I think fourth, fifth graders could do these activities and it's such a great way to get started and get comfortable in that environment. And then as you become comfortable, it just becomes so much easier to move in and do much more advanced things as you, you know, get, get older. So I would say there are ways to introduce game design and coding, you know, all through school. And, and the more we have on the, in the earlier times, you know, the easier it is to transition to what's possible later. Well, that's really cool. And it all makes sense, too, because a long time ago, you couldn't just get online and hop into Unreal Engine and design a game. You would have to go to school for that. And back then, even that was much harder than it is today. Definitely so true. I'm glad to see that people like you pushing this agenda for people to get onto Unreal Engine and start creating. It's wonderful. Thanks. Appreciate it. What are, other, what are other important skills that kids should be developing to be successful in this field? Wow, you get, you guys have the best questions. I'm, I'm very happy to be on your podcast. Let me tell you that. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. So the, so gosh, I mean, it's interesting because I feel that there are roles for people with very many different in, in, interests within whether it be gaming or Quite honestly, a product like like Unreal Engine is being used in film and TV with virtual production. It's being used in advertising, in fashion, in all these different areas. So I think it starts with what's your area of interest. When I was teaching game design, for me, I wanted kids to figure out what was most interesting to them. So I had kids that might be interested in, in animation or graphics. So for them, it was great for them to focus on that and use some of the different tools we had to kind of get comfortable in that. And then they might be on a team where they then pass off their graphics to the rest of their team to use in the game, which is very similar to how a real game company works, right? It's like you have in a game studio, you have all these different roles. So some kids are interested in storytelling and narrative. I'm sure some of the games you play have pretty amazing stories. So imagine, you know, like some kids might be the ones that are going to write that narrative and, and follow that through. Um, you also have you know, audio. So, you know, people who work on that stuff. So it's hard to say, like, like, in other words, I, I think the skill set kind of, it should be maybe drive forward by the interest, you know, that we have, because if I do decide I'm interested in graphics, then, you know, the skills might be starting out with 2D graphics and animation, and then moving into a 3D program, and then 3D animation. And in Unreal Engine, you might start rigging your characters and really getting into that kind of stuff. And then, you know, you have so much opportunity. So, yeah, so there are all these different skills. And of course, if you're interested in it, there's the whole coding side. But, but that's not the only thing that, you know, is, being, is, is what game designers do, which I, I think is pretty cool. So, yeah, I think there are a lot of different entry points. And, and again, I guess I'll just go back to that point that I think students following, finding something they're passionate about and then kind of taking that as their path, I think, is, is a really good way to go. That's very, very inspiring for anyone who I would say wants to develop with Unreal Engine. 
but doesn't know what industry they should use it for. Now they know there's so many other pathways and routes for them to take. It's almost limitless. True. Mm -hmm. Please share with us what it, please share with us about the player to creator pipeline. What is that? Yeah, good question. So I again remember how I said I'm really passionate about kids as creators. Well, I think what's you know, like you know as well as anybody that kids are pretty passionate about games, right? So like, again, we could talk about, you know, Minecraft, Roblox, all the different games that kids are already playing. And when we start thinking about like, so they're playing the game and then we might have some tools that allow them to create. Like in our case, um, you know, there's a creative mode for, for Fortnite. There's um, Twin Motion is a creativity tool that's really great for getting started. And then as we move along, you know, like I say, that. If, if we can get kids using an industry standard tool like Unreal Engine, then they can leave, you know, high school ready to go into careers because they have those skills. So I think if we leverage the excitement and passion around games and then and let kids know, hey, these games are made with these tools, I think it helps them understand, you know, what that path looks like. And then again, like you had said, um, about the different industries, then once they have these skills, they can easily decide, hey, you know what, maybe I'm interested in advertising or maybe I'm interested in fashion or film, you know, and, and because I started getting comfortable with these tools, whether it be because of games or maybe even if, if, if the schools have, like, look at what you guys are doing with broadcasting. Quite honestly, you're like well on a path to, you're, you're content creators now, like you're creating content, right? So I don't know how much editing work you do in addition to this, but it's like, you're already on that. You're well onto that path, you know? And so I think that's kind of the stuff that, um, you know, and, and again, I, if I understand correctly, your interest might have stemmed from your interest in games and playing, and now look at where you're going with it. So you're a perfect example, both of you. Thank you, Steve. I, I do have to agree with everything you said. <laughs> I love games and it really helped us start this podcast. And now look what we're doing. We're interviewing you. <laughs> exactly. It's awesome. All right. So do you think a four-year college is the best option for someone who wants to be a creator? Um, is it the best option? Um, it, it's important for me to point out that I don't think it's the only option. You know, I think um I think we I don't think it's absolutely necessary by any means. Um, you know, it, it, can it help, you know, get you along the path if, if that's your path? Certainly, if you get into like, let's say you go to a game design program or, you know, an art school or something. But what I'm so excited about with what we do is we're trying to help build alternate pathways. I think there are many kids who maybe, maybe they're going to go to college and that's great. Maybe they're not. And maybe they don't, need to and i think our i think we're moving to a time where there are ways to learn these skills that don't require a four year college necessarily um you know not i'm not disparaging you know college education you know but i don't think it's the only way to get into these industries and i think it's important that we acknowledge that and support you know we're getting to a point where you know, um, we're working with, as a good example, um, teachers and students in Los Angeles um, through the Arts Media and um, Entertainment Workforce Development Initiative. And they're looking at, it, at that as an alternate pathway where kids are learning these skills in high school, building their portfolio, and then interviewing for paid apprenticeships that could very well lead to full-time jobs right out, you know, the, right out of high school. So, um, you know, I think it's important to note that there are different ways to get there if that's your goal. And I, I don't think four-year college is the only way by any means. So for someone who might not have the option to go to just a four-year college, what would you advise them to do? What's an yeah. alternate pathway for them? Great, great. Um, so for you guys, I mean, you guys are an interesting example, right? Because you're 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 being homeschooled. So you have a lot of flexibility, I think, in terms of your program. You can very easily take a lot of like the resources we have and start learning and get those skills and and who knows where that'll take you programs like the one we're talking about in California where and we're doing a lot of teacher training to allow teachers to teach kids these school these skills in high school so they can move into these kinds of positions so i think those kind of programs are definitely possible 
I think a lot of two-year colleges are having, you know, game design programs. And, you know, my feeling is for something, if you know that you're passionate about game design or video production or any of these areas, why not get potentially into a program that has a stronger focus, um, you know, like a two-year program, maybe that is really specializes in that and doesn't, you know, go into so many other, you know, like there's that whole argument about the importance of a liberal arts education where you take a little bit of everything and that's fine, but maybe in a year or a two-year program, you can get all of the skills you need and really be ready to um, move into that kind of job. So I, I, you know, I think there are a lot of different ways to, to find that path. Well, thanks for sharing. I bet there are a lot of parents who probably think that four-year college is the only way for their kids to get a job, when in reality, there are many other things they can do. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Have you seen schools embracing esports more now compared to, to two years ago? Oh my gosh, yes. Um, in fact, this weekend, I was at an event um, for Garden State Esports. So you guys know New Jersey. So New Jersey has an esports organization called Garden State Esports. And they have grown. Um, I started, I helped start the program before I came to Epic. But in the time that I've left, they've grown to like, I think they have something like 150 schools in New Jersey that are part of it. So those are all schools that when I was around, like, I mean, even three, four or five years ago, they didn't have programs. Now, every school I see seems to be starting an esports program, which I think is awesome. And when I was at this event this weekend, this was their spring championships. There were hundreds of people there representing so many different schools. So yeah, when I started, um, Chris Aviles, who's the the other founder of Garden State Esports, when we started, he had a Rocket League team. He asked if I would play because he had nobody to play. So our two middle school teams played each other. Then slowly, one other team said, hey, we'd like to play. And then another and another. And now there are hundreds of schools just in New Jersey. So if you look around the, the country and the world, it's it's tremendous growth for sure. That's wonderful. Do you also think that Unreal Engine will be be used in secondary school in the near future? It already is. Um, that's my whole goal in 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 what I do is to to train teachers so they can use it in their high secondary schools. So, one of our goals this year is to train seven hundred educators to be able to be comfortable enough to bring this into their classroom. Um, we don't charge anything for the training. We just really want to help support schools and teachers to provide these opportunities for students. So it is happening. Um, and I'm really excited about that. And some of the resources, like I said, I think before about our um, hour of code, our game, does, like create your first game in Unreal Engine project is really easy to just bring into a classroom and let kids like I'll share it with you guys. I bet you can, you know, um, you know, certainly tell your mom that you have to do this as a project now. And uh, That'll probably be something you guys can do as uh, something for, for your school and, and share with me your results because I think you'll love it. That's very, very, very interesting. And so hopefully in the near future, they will use Unreal Engine and we'll see if that's something that schools all around the world will be using Unreal Engine. That's my Say, do you know what time it is? Yep, now it's time for Esports Metaverse News. Steve, what's the biggest trend you're currently seeing in game in game based learning in schools? I, I I think you know kind of like I said uh, the the idea of students as content creators using game technology and to your point about both the metaverse and esports, I think ki I, I always say kids like you are already living in a, in the prototype of the metaverse. Like we have metaverse experiences now that you know better than most adults. So having kids start to now learn these creation tools and because you're going to be the ones to create it, right? You're going to be much better suited to create the, to help build the metaverse than I am. And likewise, you know, in terms of esports, I think it's interesting how we can create competitive experiences in these game environments and, and, and bring that forward as well. So I think the content creation is, is, is where it's at. What are your thoughts on child safety in the metaverse? Should that be a big concern? Um, I, I think the concern, that's a great question. I think what we need, I, I think we need to teach, um, we need to embrace 
the technology and what's possible. And I think we need to support our students in that environment. Um, I often talk about something called, you know, navigating digital culture. I would much prefer that kids in a school environment learn, you know, both in esports and like you say, the metaverse, that they're in those spaces, but with the support of educators and say, and uh, trusted adults so they can understand how to navigate that. Like if you do run into a challenge, I'd like for kids to know how to handle that. I think one of the problems we've had in the past is that when kids are unsupervised in these online spaces, there's the potential for something to happen where their safety is compromised. I want for us to be right there with them to help teach like, hey, let us help you make sure that you can make you know, the right decisions and that you can protect yourself. And we need to protect privacy and all of those things are very important. But, um, but it is, I think the key to it is that we play a role in, in bringing that into education. That's great. So what is Epic Games specifically doing to help educational gaming? So, oh, that's a great, so like I said, in my role, the resources that we've had people develop, we have a robotics learning kit that you could do all virtual robotics in Unreal Engine. We have computer science courses that can be brought right into the classroom with Unreal Engine. We have our hour of code game design activities. We do this for all of our tools. So we have lesson plans for all of our products that you can use and teachers can use in the classroom. And then the extensive training we're doing, we do a 30 hour training with teachers so that they feel comfortable enough bringing these tools into the classroom. So we're very big into education. We're also, we participate in a lot of um, technology conferences or educational technology conferences. So we travel a lot. We speak about these topics and all that. Um, and our Epic Mega Grant program supports education. So we've been granting money to people who want to do interesting things with education and these tools. Um, and then you probably heard a little bit about the partnership we had recently with Lego. Now, not too much has been revealed yet, but one of the big key ideas there is that we're specifically building a safe metaverse environment for kids in that Lego um, you know, universe, so to speak. Again, there's not much information yet, but that's the key idea behind it. So, you know, we're a company that really supports education, really believes in helping, you know, create this creator community and um you know so i'm just excited to be part of that wow the stuff you're telling sage and i is great news and i haven't heard any of this myself so thank you for sharing absolute All pleasure that you're doing in epic games is wonderful thank you so steve what do you think is the future of education in the metaverse in vr in ar you guys, man, I, you did your homework before this because you have definitely great questions. So I think that, you know, I had kind of touched on it before, but I think in terms of the future of the of education in the metaverse, I think we are going to, we already have metaverse experiences. Um, you know, we created an experience that was, um, you know, a Martin Luther King, um, like the I Have a Dream speech in 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 a Fortnite experience where students could enter in or anybody could enter in and the speech was playing on the jumbotrons there was like a civil rights museum within the experience so we're creating these metaverse experiences now right i think the metaverse when we really get to what it's intended to be will be something that you'll navigate from one experience to another even if it's in you know created in unreal or maybe in roblox you might be able to go to all these different ones but i think there's going to be places to go to receive educational content that's been created. I think kids are going to be creating educational experiences in these environments. And again, I kind of think like, while we could learn in the metaverse, I also think, you know, as I keep talking about, I want kids to be the ones that are going to create most of the metaverse. Because again, if I can get you these skills, you're probably better equipped and have more knowledge about what these experiences should ultimately look like and for you to be able to then go out and, and really drive this forward, because we're still a number of years away from what I think we'll realize as, you know, really what we're looking at at the metaverse. Um, 
And I think you asked something else there, but uh, I don't know if I covered it all. Was there some other part to that question? Uh, uh, no, I think that's most of it. All right. What you said was really, really amazing. You're a very smart person. I can ha! tell you that. So are you guys. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Steve, before we go, what final piece of advice do you have for parents and children that will listen to us? Well, you know, I, I mean, this is so interesting. Like, I'm talking to you guys, right? And you are doing it. You're creating content. You're, you know, learning real world skills. I mean, like the skills that you're acquiring by having this podcast, you could go into broadcasting, you know, and maybe you will or, or pretty easily. I mean, you're in it. I shouldn't say go into, you're in it with what you're doing right now. The more we can provide kids with real world experiences, um, when we're in an esports environment, the more we could have students being the ones to, um, to be you know, involved in every aspect of it. Again, I'll bring back that um, Garden State Esports event I was at this Saturday. All of the broadcast was done by students. All of the shoutcasting was done by students. These kids are training in very real experiences. All of the organization of the event was done by students. I mean, you know, let's give kids real opportunities and and give them opportunities to solve real problems. Um, and then I think we're doing the right thing. And again, you guys, I think, are a perfect example of, of what's possible in that. Well, thank you, Steve. Great advice. Everything you told us today was phenomenal. And I hope that our fans have learned just as much as we did, because everything you're saying, it makes sense. It's just great. Thank you, Steve. No, thank you, guys. Where can people find out more about you? So um, I'm on, on Twitter, and I use Twitter a lot. Uh, there I'm at Mr. Like MR underscore Isaacs, I-S-A-A-C-S. -A -A uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I think you'd find me as Steve, S-T-E-V-E dash Isaacs, I-S-A-A-C-S. -A -A and my email is Stephen.Isaacs at epicgames.com. Thank you for sharing, Steve. It sure. was wonderful talking to you today. You guys also. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you. you.